What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Premium Bandai review here of the HGUC Zeta Plus test image color here from Gundam Sentinel. This is, I think is also known as the Amuro Ray custom color version of this. As you can see, we got the Amuro logo up there on the uh, shoulder of this. I personally much prefer the Zeta Plus over the design of the original Zeta, so I thought this was a pretty cool design. And of course there is a master grade of this kit, but I just opted to check out here the new Premium Bandai HGUC kit of this. So let's go ahead and get into it. With this being a Premium Bandai kit, there's not a whole lot to see here on the outside of the box, but it is pretty cool. It's always nice. I mean, these premium boxes, they don't really necessarily, I don't know, depending on what your definition of premium is, they don't necessarily feel premium, but the fact that they're just so like plain, I guess is just make them, separates them from like your standard release kit that has like tons of pictures and stuff on the outside of the box. So uh, first thing here, we got a bunch of stickers there, it looks like. Uh, not too unusual for a, an HG kit but not always necessarily great to see. But what is great to see in here, it looks like it does come with some water slides as well. So that's awesome. Not very often do we get kits that come with water slides. Sometimes the Premium Bandai Master Grade kits do. Very rarely do Premium Bandai HGUC kits or any HG kits, uh, Premium Bandai or not, come with water slides. So that is not a very common thing to be included, but super glad that those are included. It's a relatively small sheet, but it does look nice. Then we got the instructions here. So the instructions basically are going to be for the regular unicorn version of the Zeta Plus, which I also really like it in just these gray colors. It also does look really cool as well. I've really been wanting to check out this kit ever since it was released. So that's why I have ton the opportunity to just check out this different version of it, but it's pretty much gonna be mostly the same, but that's gonna be our manual for this kit. So I don't really get into much uh, into taking a look at the manual for this because it's all not really relevant to this version of the kit, but you got some photos of what the kit is gonna look like. I guess you could repaint this into this custom color scheme, the unicorn version color scheme if you wanted, but we don't have the markings for that or anything. So anyway, that just goes through the construction. And this little bit is what's added for this particular version of the kit. And basically this is going to give you, I think just the different sticker guide for the kit. Here is the marking guide for the water slide decals down here. You also have the color guide there in Japanese and in English. And then in this part, it's just, uh, it looks like you might have different construction, but as far as I know, all the parts are exactly the same. So the construction is not different at all. It's just that the stickers have different numbers on them. So that's why they had to include this in the manual here to show you which stickers go where because otherwise if you're just referring to this manual the stickers are different so you might have trouble figuring that out I guess but I don't think it'd be too terribly complicated let's just go ahead and get a look at the runners then shall we so once again here's a look at that water slide decal sheet it's looking very nice you have the 018 logo up there in numbers then you have some other numbers you can actually choose whichever number you want you have some Zeta plus markings there in red and in white, some Caraba Air Force logos, uh, Anaheim Electronics logos, some Amaro logos there. So some really nice marking decals for this. And uh, certainly not quite as exciting, but you have the foil stickers here, a whole bunch of color correcting foil stickers on there it looks like. And you got some there for the different cameras and things, for the eyes and these big red and yellow ones on here as well. You've got runner SB6 here for some small size beam saber effect parts for this in clear light blue. And runner PC123 here for the poly caps in gray. And then in this very bright, slightly orangish color red, here we have runner A from just the original Zeta Plus kits, or it's just marked Zeta Plus anyway. It's not actually marked for the Unicorn version, but it would have originally been included with the Unicorn version of the kit back from 2014. And then runner B here as well, this time in a slightly off-white, slightly cream kind of color for the white color armor. And runner C as well, a few more of those armor parts in that light cream color. You got two of the C runner. And the last of our cream color parts here on runner D1. Because then runner D2 is now in this very light gray color here for the parts for the feet. Runner E1 in a medium gray color here is going to be for the joint parts, hand parts, also the parts for the rifle on there as well as you can see. And then we've got runner E2 which is a copy of this section of the runner here for some more of the joint parts. And then finally runner F for a few more joint parts on there as well as the part looks like probably for the transformation which will be a parts forming transformation for this into wave rider mode. So that is it for everything that you got included there. It looks like a pretty nice HGUC kit for sure. I like the design on this, the proportions, the detailing looks pretty good. We'll see how it performs once it's all actually built up. The water slide decals are a great addition to this as well. So let me get this put together and then we'll see how it looks. All right guys, here's how it's gonna look straight out of the box. And I gotta say straight out of the box is not looking that great. <laughs> it's gonna look, uh, yeah, the red and the white plastic. I mean, just the combination of the design. I mean, I like the color layout of this mobile suit. It's just that the white plastic, you, you can't, you kind of lose a lot of the details there. Uh, so you definitely would want to do some panel lining and the red plastic it just kind of looks very toy like so i mean what you could do to fix that would be just to spray some top coat on it would definitely make that look a little bit better that's just speaking if you're not going to fully paint the kit i mean uh and then you have the addition of the stickers as well which are kind of doing fine if you don't look too closely they're not 
necessarily that noticeable, but they're certainly a lot more noticeable, I think, from the back, the ones on the wings, those big long red stickers there covering the edges of the wings. So uh, without any other markings and without any panel lining, anything like this, if you're just planning on just getting this kit, building it up just straight out of the box and putting it like it is, uh, I think it's not really looking all that good, but it, there's definitely potential there though. So let's take a look at the kit and then see what, uh, what maybe you could do, possibly do with this. So for our accessories here, we've got a handful of parts that we'll be using for parts forming the kit into Wave Rider mode. As I've said many times before, I prefer parts forming kits for transformation rather than full transformation, uh, especially in HGs, because that usually means that the base kit will be more solid. You don't have any finicky, loose, wobbly parts on it, so I don't mind that at all. Uh, we have one extra hand option here for a trigger finger hand, otherwise our main two hand options just those regular holding hands. This one is for the beam rifle. The beam rifle is here, the same beam rifle that is used with the Delta Plus, I believe, and I think a couple other different versions of that. The handle does fold in again for the Wave Rider mode, and you get a little tab there, which you'll be able to plug onto the suit once it's transformed. Uh, it doesn't have any stickers or anything on that, and I'm noticing a little nub mark there at the end I forgot to cut off, but anyway, it's a cool beam rifle design. I like it. I like that it's a pretty long one as well compared to the mobile suit. It comes up to right about the top of the torso, about the shoulder height of it, so it's a good length. We've got our beam sabers here, we've got the handles in gray and the beam effects in light blue, which I like as well just because it's something different instead of just clear pink as usual, just light blue here is just something a little bit different, a little bit unique. The actual beam saber handles don't plug anywhere onto the kit when not in use, so you'll just have these just separate off to the side. And finally this shield, which I really like as well just for its really unique design. You have a couple of green foil stickers in here you can see for the different cameras. And it's just such a cool, yeah, like I said, unique design for this is one reason why I like the Zeta Plus. Its shield design is pretty cool. So this just plugs on here onto the back of the arm. And you can plug it on either way, either out to the front like that or as it's kind of more typically seen uh, with it up like that. Uh, either way, it just plugs right there onto the back of the arm pretty simply. As for the kit itself, just where all those stickers are, we got one for the head camera, for the eyes, of course, is two little separate stickers, yellow stickers there for around the collar, red stickers on the side of the head, on the wings here, you've got one, two, three, four stickers, I think it was, that go over the whole edge of the wing all the way down there. And then up on the back of the head, another little camera sticker there in light blue for the camera on the back of the head. Now, we also have some safety flags on the V-Fin, which I've not removed yet, but the shape of the V-Fin on the Zeta Plus does have like a little nub sort of like design at the end of this. So it's not too necessarily off. Now that is something that's happened a couple times to me now. This particular shoulder armor, for some reason, not the other one, but this one keeps falling apart on me. So if you see the way the shoulder armor goes together, the pegs connecting the front and back half aren't very long and they're, so they're just kind of like just barely holding on there. And I think it's maybe designed that way for two reasons. One, just because of the nature of the shoulder armor and because they had to fit the arm in there. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot of space to make these much longer. Also, I think for the transformation, you have to remove these parts for the transformation. So I think they didn't want to make it too difficult to pull these apart uh, because you need to change them. Uh, and so just for either one or both of those reasons, this shoulder armor unfortunately is kind of tricky to get it to stay on there. So if you're going to be moving the kit around, changing the pose or something like that a lot, you're going to be running into this issue. Well, I'm just going to leave it off for now while we go over the transformation because it's surely going to fall off again. Or the articulation, I mean, but we'll go over the transformation here in a moment as well too. Just so for the head, that will go up to there, which is not too bad. And then down, it's got kind of a double joint here in the neck, but it's not really all that noticeable when you can point the head down, not really all that much. So I kind of wish you could get the head maybe up a little bit higher so that the front part could be angled down a little bit more. It's kind of like, this is as far down as it goes, but it's pretty much just looking straight ahead. So it's not really as much as I would like. The shoulder is just attached via a ball joint, so you can wiggle that a little bit forward and back there. The shoulder armor, again, like I said, moves up, but it's just kind of for the transformation. But the arm itself will only move up to about 90 degrees there like that. You have some rotation there at the top of the arm, and then your elbow joint is gonna give you about 90 degrees bend there, a little bit more than 90 degrees, but not really too much. You will have seam lines here on the arm, on the front of the arm, unfortunately, right there through this detail and like right through the center of the arm where you've got this raised detail on the edges. So that one's gonna be a little bit tricky to remove. And then on the back of the arm, you've got seam line all the way down there as well. On the top of the shoulders, you got seam lines there, but it's kind of hidden as just like part of the shoulder detail there. So it's not really too noticeable, I think. And in the torso, you've got kind of a little bit of a forward and back wiggle there, but not really too much of what I would call any sort of ab 
crunch articulation or anything. You do have also a little tiny bit of side to side um, movement there, but again, it's not really gonna be a whole lot without kind of then starting to pull the kit apart, really. You don't really have front skirts, so there's nothing really too much there to talk about. Now, back here on the back, the back skirts will move up and down. Those are just connected together, so you can move those up and down like that. No detail or anything underneath, so there's not really too much to see there. The side skirts, sort of the beam cannons here, are not really side skirts as they're connected onto the top of the leg, but those will move in and out and forward like that as they're meant to be fired like so, but I like the design of those. Some nice color separation and no seam line here, so that's cool. They, those go together pretty nicely. The leg itself will come up to about 90 degrees before it's starting to run into that uh, kind of front armor piece. So if you angle that out a little bit, I think you could get that a little bit higher, but the problem is that it can't angle out anymore because of the beam cannon on there. So just about 90 degrees is about as far as the leg is gonna go forward. Then you got a double joint here in the knee to give you a nice full bend there, but again, it's because of the transformation you need to kind of bend the knee strangely for that. As for the ankle down here, this little piece of armor on the front moves a little bit. The whole toe will fold and point down again for the transformation, but that works pretty well. Up the front, you got a little bit of movement there as well. Side to side, gonna be a little bit, but not really too much, but enough to get a nice wide stance if you were gonna have this standing. And you have this little flap here on the back, which will also move up and down a little bit also. Now, as for the seam line here in the legs, it's meant to have these two-tone colors, so it's nice to have this line as like separate pieces right down the middle of there. That said, if you wanted to paint this all as one solid color, you might want to remove this seam line and just end up gluing these and just getting rid of that seam line there. Uh, on the inside of the leg, it's gonna be a little bit more of a problem because that seam runs right through this vent detail here. So it's a shame they couldn't have made that in a different way to just go like around the inside of the vent and just avoid that kind of middle section there. Having that middle section as just like part of the white part or something would have been nicer, but that's gonna be a little bit tricky of a seam line to work with there on the inside of that vent, there on the inside of the leg. But then just going around here to the backpack as well, these wings will move up and down like that. And then of course the nose cone kind of center section will also, or stabilizer I guess it is actually, will move up and down on the back there as well. So here it is transformed, and again, this is one of the other reasons why I do particularly like the Zeta Plus compared to the regular Zeta. I prefer the transformation of this one as well. I like the way that this looks when it's transformed. It's a pretty convincing design. I mean, you can see the legs pretty obviously there out the back, but like the arms, the torso, the head, all of that's pretty hidden, and of course you actually have that left over. You have basically the full torso and head as just leftover parts that you're just not gonna use. In, with this parts formation, but it's a pretty cool transformation. Transformation, I think it looks really interesting like this, especially that shield nose cone, like I said, is a really cool, unique design for this, so really interesting. And if this wasn't a P Bandai kit, it's one of those that I would say would be worth considering thinking about picking up two of them to have one displayed in Wave Rider mode like this as well. But then again, you have just the standard version if you wanted to get that and display it in Wave Rider mode or paint it to look like this. Either way, I think having two of this particular kit in whichever color version uh, is something that I think could definitely look pretty cool. But as we get into posing up the kits, trying out a few action poses with the accessories and everything is where you're gonna run into a couple of other problems with this. And the number one, first one being that the articulation there at the hips of the legs is a little bit limited just because of the design of those. I think partly because of the transformation, but more just the design of the hip joint for some reason. It's just not very good, even though this kit is not that old. Uh, it, and I think also just due to the cannons on the sides of the legs also are just kind of get in the way But just that they limit you from getting the legs to spread out too wide for a cool dynamic action poses Pretty much you can move swing the legs forward and back and that's kind of about it unfortunately But uh, the other problem is with the beam saber handle the beam saber handle being like the exact same width as the beam saber blade if you're not holding that carefully if you don't have the hand pressed together pretty tightly around that uh, what you notice can possibly happen is that the beam saber just slips right through the hand and out of the hand so just be a little bit careful with that if you have this up on your shelf or something make sure that the handle is nice and secure in the hand if you're having that in use otherwise it'll slip out of there and don't want it to get lost or anything like that so just be careful with that so ultimately this kit I think is a bit of a mixed bag I think it's a cool design I like the design I like the wave runner mode I like the weapons and everything really kind of about it it's just that the actual kit form of the design uh, is a little bit, yeah, there's pros and cons. It, it's got some stickers, it's got some seam lines, it's got some limits to the articulation for sure, and some bits of the proportions I think could use some adjustments also, but we won't really need to get into too much into that, but uh, that said, it is also going to be a little bit more expensive being an alternate color version of this, basically, uh, being, being a P Bandai kit. So if you really like this design, then I would say go for just the regular version and, and then just uh, you know paint it in the different colors if you want. 
but I couldn't really say this is a kit I would recommend to everyone. I would just say if you like this design, uh, and, and I'm not sure, the Master Grade is older. This is slightly newer than the Master Grade, so maybe this is better or worse in some ways. I haven't built the Master Grade, so I couldn't really compare it. Uh, but those of you who have, maybe weigh in with your opinions on that, the High Grade versus the Master Grade. Hopefully, maybe someday we'll get a 2.0 version of the Master Grade based off of the Zeta 2.0. That would be cool. But until then, I'm not sure if this would ultimately be the best version of this or if the Master Grade, despite being older, is still better. I don't know. What do you guys think? Either way, if this is a design you like, think no matter if you go the High Grade or a Master Grade route, you're due for a little bit of work to get it to really look its best. But still, you've got what you need there to get started anyway, and it's a pretty cool kit regardless. So thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, you can check the link to USA Gundam store down below and save 10% off everything there on the site using my coupon code ZAKURILIUS10, so check that out. If you guys do have any other further questions or comments about this, of course, feel free to leave those down below as well, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye, guys.